That's like unacceptable from a design perspective. Like, how can you, I don't know, how can you ship anything like that? We got our experts together to break down what Apple intelligence could really mean for the industry. I think it's safe to say that my entire career in tech has been inspired by that work that Apple did. I've always been a big Apple fanboy. And what they do does affect the entire industry for better or for worse. I actually appreciate them for not mentioning AI all the time because I think it's like, it's become such a buzzword. It just makes so much sense. Like Apple does not want to feel artificial at all. It wants to feel natural and personalized and close to people. Virtual reality? No. It's spatial computing. AI? No. It's Apple intelligence. Uh, Apple didn't come up with features I wasn't really expecting, but I think they nailed all the small little details of the implementation. They have so many devices out there already, so it's not in their interest to take a ton of risk and move super fast. They should work on owning the OS and the platform, which I think they've done beautifully. I think app intents is the most important thing because in the future, our devices need to help us get things done. And I think they're laying out the foundations and the frameworks to be able to enable this on a on a bigger scale in the future, including involving their developers. This was one of the most exciting parts about WWDC. It made me gasp. They're gonna allow developers to tap into uh, all the new AI features. So I do think it's the, it's the evolution of shortcuts. Opening their ecosystem like this is something I actually thought Google would have done first. I definitely think this is like a turning point in terms of Apple's consumer devices, because once they build their kind of intent ecosystem with their developers, it will be an even stronger moat for them as a business. So I expect them to keep following this direction. Yeah, you know, with the, the photo generation was the bit that felt the least Apple. The AI generated images, they just look so mid journey from like two years ago. I think that the emojis are fine. The emojis are fine because it's very small and it looks like an emoji, but the, the Gen AI, the rest of the Gen AI images, they look not great. Did not include photorealism because it's a really touchy topic, I would say. Um, it was for them a safe choice to just stick with three uh, photo generation uh, uh, styles. This is not AI related, but like the home screen icon customization, that's like unacceptable from a design perspective. Like, how can you, I don't know, how can you ship anything like that? I think Apple's push on privacy is, um, is quite important. Privacy is going to be super key in the new AI era. The fact that we can now, like, in some way trust a company to keep our data secure because over the past four or five years, they've been building their own hardware to, to allow these kind of features to run 100% on device. It's quite a welcome uh, welcome change in the industry. Like sure, like you can run a lot on your phone, but for anything that you can't, it will need to be sent off into the cloud. We're, what we're gonna see is that companies are gonna try and move more and more things on device because not only is it more secure, it's also faster. It's not reliant on an internet connection. It's overall a better experience and it's private. The semantic index, this idea of personal context and being able to see what's on your screen is sort of creepy. Uh, and we've seen Windows get into a lot of hot water about it. And now that Apple is doing exactly the same thing, it seems like the, the industry isn't too bothered about it. I think a lot of Apple's privacy and security um, talk is just marketing. They used the right terms when introducing this idea of the semantic index. You know, if you tell someone we're taking screenshots of your screen every five seconds or so. Huh? While Apple introduced it in a in a more abstract uh, way, while under the hood it's technically doing the the same thing. And they did say many times during the presentation that it can be verified by third parties. Things I, w I wonder about is if you, when do they run this indexing process? Do they run it overnight to to generate the embeddings? Is whether this data is going to be used? Uh, to improve basically the, the global models for everyone. I would like Apple to come up with a, with a video and explain this in, into a bit more details. The writing add-on AI features are the ones that are going to see the most usage in the short term, in my opinion. This is all now integrated natively into the OS, is, uh, is really powerful. Just like how at one point in time you would need to physically go to a library, walk down the aisles, look for a book, read the book, find the passage you, you want to cite, and like write down all your notes by hand versus today where we do most of your research online. People are going to get used to no longer needing to rewrite 
their drafts or even summarizing or making key points because these things are just going to be automated. I think short term AI should just make your life a little bit easier in the long term over time it will just do more and more for you and it will especially remove like annoying tasks from your life so you can focus on what's important to you. And given that this is a text writing feature rather than an app specific one means that automatically all third party applications that provide writing features will be able to tap into these APIs, basically killing entire segments of the like the writing tool. There is definitely going to be a performance uh, hit. You know, you're running a lot more computation, trying to handle a lot of data and reason about it. I'm really interested to see the latency that will be involved when it comes to text generation or image generation. But I do think that the move that Apple has been going towards with all their uh, latest chip upgrades is going to make it more and more uh, usable on a day to day basis. I don't have a clear idea yet. Like what's the balance? Because like if you put too much, too many AI features into the product, it kind of it's not that clean anymore. It becomes too complicated. It's a it's a it's a fine line to balance, I think. And yeah, I don't have a clear idea of how to balance it yet. I started spending a lot of time on Discord and Twitter and YouTube, looking at the community and what they were saying. And I felt like the way we can shine as a company is by being really close to people, making them feel like we're we're out there working with them. Let's take a different approach to what all the other companies are doing. Let's make it really approachable and intuitive for everyone. So Apple's latest releases show a ton of new software improvements. But remember, even the best software needs solid hardware to shine. There are a lot of fakes out there. So to get the best for you, we asked our experts what to look out for. Here are seven signs to spot bad tech before buying.